Depression is all that remains when you run out of excuses. There's nothing left. If you, if you, I don't use excuses and I've talked about on podcasts why I don't like excuses because I believe it prevents me being ultimately self-accountable and it's ultimate self-accountability that makes me a feared opponent in all realms of human endeavor because it makes me as competitive as possible and we live in a hyper-competitive world. It's three in the morning, you're in a gas station, you're in your car, you're in your toilet, you're sitting there filling up with gas. You see a Lamborghini and a guy gets out three in the morning on a Tuesday and you look at him in his Lambo with all of his money, do you think, wow, he must have got a really good degree? Or do you think, drug dealer, criminal, gangster? You intrinsically look to crime, not because you think he's a criminal, but because you understand if you stay within the parameters of society, you cannot achieve extraordinary things. You know intrinsically he's broken some rule to get where he is. You become strong enough for your mind to become strong. When you have a strong mind, you cannot fail in this world because most people have weak minds. It's actually extremely easy. It's actually extremely easy to I have one life, and it, I, was it hard? Yeah. Did I work hard? Yeah. Was it impossibly hard? No. I hope all of you at home follow in my path. I want you to become physically strong, mentally strong, financially strong. If you take action, you will win. Let me tell you a secret about the universe. Everybody always says, if you tried your best, that's all that matters. The best is all you can do. If you tried your best, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if you lose if you tried your best. Most people have heard that before. But there is a secret to the universe that most don't know. If you actually try your best, you can't lose. Not pretend to try your best. Not try the best. Not try your best 90% of the time. Not try your best with excuses. If you genuinely try your best all of the time, all day, every day, it's impossible. So when people say, if you tried your best, it's okay to lose, that is a logic fail. Because if you lost, you didn't try your best in the first place. If you actually try your best, it is impossible to fail in this life. If you want it the most, you can have it. It's a competition. Every dollar you want, the house you want, the car you want, other people want. You have to win. You have to want it the most and genuinely do your best because most people aren't capable of doing their best anymore. To get up every day, whether they feel like it or not, and perform regardless. That is the secret. You cannot fail if you try your best. So if you don't have the car you want, the woman you want, the relationship you want, the friends you want, the house you want, you haven't been trying your best. Because I guarantee you, the second you do, you'll have all of it. Every single one. If you're a young man, you have all the energy you're ever gonna have. You're, you have Wolverine-like healing abilities. And the last thing you wanna do is set yourself up for a life of laziness. You should be an animal. Kind of amazing to me that especially men sit and wonder like, what do I do in this situation? The answer to most problems as a man is always gonna be to work harder. Most situations in life, regardless of whether you're 15, 25, 45, the answer is usually to work harder and there's always something to work on. And a lot of that is gonna be, of course, your finances, your network, but your physicality. There's no such thing as too strong. You can never finish the gym. You'd be formidable and fearsome. The easiest way I had a lot of people ask me, hey, how do I come across this high value? Be high value. That's the easiest way to do it. Why are you trying to fake? Why are you trying to lie? I truly don't understand how most men don't wake up and think, shit, I'm not good enough. And I think you need that degree of insecurity, I guess, and anxiety that's going to propel you towards the top. I don't think most people can learn anything unless it's painful. I've never seen people learn lessons the easy way. Humans only learn the hard way. You need to pay attention to it. So you need to be happy that these lessons come. You just have to make sure you ingest them and you don't allow them to happen to you again. It goes back to leveling up your character and your network and who you are as a man. You have that money in the bank, your bills were obviously paid. Did you at least use that time to become fearsome? Did you at least use that time to become the kind of man who can wear a normal ass t-shirt but still look like Hercules? Because if you didn't, if you didn't, then you wasted the money anyway. That's exactly, this, that's the kind of thing you should have been doing as bare minimum standard. And there's a sense of contentment that comes from doing the things you're supposed to do. It doesn't even, we, people say it's the journey, not the destination, that's true. But I wake up and I, if I have a day where I've worked as hard as I can, I've trained and done all the training I'm supposed to do, I've spoken to all the people I'm supposed to speak to, I've eaten right, I've done everything right, I feel happy just from doing the right things. You do the right things over and over again, you're gonna end up in the right place. It's all building blocks. You should feel good from just doing the right things regardless and you'll end up there on accident. Life is actually very easy to succeed in. How do I achieve X? And the answer is always gonna be hard work. It's always gonna be the sentence and the saying I use over and over again that people think is a joke. Unmatched perspicacity and sheer indefatigability. The ability to pay attention, notice things, and never quit. That's all it is. Pay attention, notice things, and never give up. 
And if you do that, you're going to succeed. It is so easy to be successful in life. When I meet a person who's not successful, I have to analyze why did this guy decide to quit? What was more what was more interesting to him than being the man he could have been? Was it food? Was it that one chick who broke his heart and just ran him around for years? What was it that distracted him from his life purpose of being something that mattered? All these temporary happinesses, they don't last long. You could have temporary happiness for what? A day? A week? You could eat cake. It'll make you happy for five minutes. If that, there's no incentive for you to truly push yourself beyond your limits. You need a deadline. You need to find a place where you put it all on the line. What was I saying earlier about men who were respected at some point did something dangerous? If it was guaranteed for you to win, then fighting wouldn't be respected. The reason it's respected is because you take the risk of losing. That's the whole point. That's how it works with everything in life. If it's guaranteed to pull off, nobody's interested. You have to take that risk in the first place. That's the only way you get respect. Respect lies on the other side of fear. Once you adopt that mindset, how can you not be successful? I have to train because if I don't, I feel too guilty to sleep. I feel dirty. I feel terrible inside if I don't train. Once you get that mindset, how, how can you lack motivation? Motivation is free and unlimited. It's discipline and purpose. It's more important. You need to become strong fast. You need to go through some hardship quickly. You need to go through some stuff. And that's actually a very important point. You can't have winners without losers. You can't have light without dark. I think discipline is always a fantastic thing. And if you find a framework which instills discipline inside of you and instills gratefulness inside of you, I think that's a good thing. I think most people can agree that being disciplined and being grateful is going to benefit your life. You need to become a charming, smart, interesting, rich man. The right move to make is always the right move to make. The war is here. When the battle turns up at your front fucking door, you can't just cower. Someone has to fight. So yeah, maybe I'm at the front, but I'm also in a unique position to handle that. One, because of the stress. Second, because of the finances. Third, because I'm hard to hurt. You can't avoid this battle. You're just going to end up in a battle with your own fucking head. You're going to have to fight. To all the men watching this, you are going to fight somebody at some point, either the Matrix or your fucking self. Choose. I refuse to turn on myself. I'm not going to be the guy who turns on myself and makes an enemy out of my own fucking mind. No, sir. It doesn't matter what what situation you're in, you need to at least believe you have some degree of control. If you're the kind of person who deserves a good life and works their ass off and genuinely wants it and tries very hard. Guess what you get 99% of the time? A good life. I've yet to meet somebody who gets up every day, does what they're supposed to do, works hard, goes to the gym, then goes to work, does their best, makes their money, looks after it, is sensible, doesn't blow it, etc., etc. who then fails. I've never met anybody who fails when they do all the right things. If I was truly heartbroken today, let's imagine, and I could barely sleep, I'd be in better shape than I've ever been. I'd train like a fucking animal. You have to just take the energy inside of you. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. And you have to look at that and understand that the sadness inside of you is energy. You can't destroy it, but you can convert it into something else which is constructive. And you just have to suck it up by a cop and get over it. The crazy thing about life and the crazy thing about war, it's always been the same. Getting money and getting status is absolutely not really important because without those things, you're going to end up at the bottom of the ladder. Having money and status and skills are still going to save you from ending up being the guy in the foxhole just getting blown to fucking smithereens for no reason. You always have to be that guy. So you always have to be upgrading and improving yourself. If you're working as hard as possible all of the time, then you already have all your answers before the problems even appear. Just be the strongest, most honorable, best version of yourself. Don't be a bad person. Be a good person. Tell the truth. Be honorable. Protect the people that you care about. Be polite to everybody. Make as much money as you can. Go to the gym. Get in good shape. Find other guys who are on the same mission as you. That's what you need to do. And by doing that in and of itself, you're automatically going to be a beacon of resistance. Even if you don't do anything or say anything, just being a person who has his life in order, who's not struggling within his own mind, who's not depressed, who's not sad, who has a the people on the same mission, same path as him, that's going to make you a beacon of resistance. The best option, the best thing to do is still to get up, be an adult, control your emotions, be stoic, and do the things you're supposed to do day after day. Laying in bed and doing nothing is never going to be the best option. The best option is still to go to the gym, to work hard, to run your business, and be successful. So it doesn't matter. We're talking about the different positions on the chessboard. But if the rules of the game remain the same, regardless of the position you're still trying to win, you, you still have to do the same things. If the world is truly that competitive, you do not have time to be depressed because it's a non-competitive mind state. Mm. I, you can be depressed for X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm not depressed. And I want the money you want, and I want the girl you want, and I want the status you want, and the car you want, and the house you want. But what I'm saying is you're playing a game, and it's a competitive game you need to build a mindset that allows you to be ultra competitive. If you want to sit there and say, no, I want a non-competitive mindset, then fine. You know what you call people who do not win competitions? Losers. Correct. Men have always been competing with each other. Even now, right now, we compete with each other. I don't buy Ferraris to drive fast. I do sometimes, but if I'm in London traffic, it's not to go quick. No. It's to show everyone else. I'm Richard Nett. That's what it is. It's a never ending competition. I don't wear a big diamond Patek. 
fucking half a million dollars to tell the time. I tell the time on my phone. <laughs> I do it because I'm loaded. And this is the, uh, this is actually what's interesting about the world because the world's changed. Men used to go to war and fight each other in physical combat. And now we don't because we're more civilized in some, in some regard. That's violence is still the bottom line of society if you try and avoid it. Men are constantly doing combat by showing each other how we can move forward with money. We're, we're constantly in combat because of our status. 99% of what men do is for status. We want to be in good shape for status. We want the fast car for status. We want the nice house for status. We want the diamond watch. We want the hot girl. This is all for our status. Look at me. I'm the big dog. This is how we compete with each other. If you're going to be a dude who pretends that's not true or be a dude who doesn't want to compete with life's going to fucking suck. Humans have always done this. It's just like, no, I'm the boss. No, I'm the boss. So, okay, then let's find out who's the boss. And now we live in a world where I think that status is the new form of combat. And the true expression of testosterone is showing the world to move the world with money. This is why I do a lot of the things I do. When I show up to a hotel and every single member of staff panics and they're all standing there waiting only for me and no one else is allowed to walk in and all my cars are out front and Mr. Tate, Mr. Tate, Mr. Tate. That, that, that's, that's, war. that's winning. That's what it is. That's the game. And, and I don't have time to even accept the idea of a reality where I can't create that for myself. I truthfully believe that the universe is a very giving place. And I don't want to sound, you know, very fairy, but I truthfully believe that the universe is a giving place and that if you actually really want something, how much you want is how much you're prepared to sacrifice. So if you want half a million a year, you can definitely make that. And that level of stress you'll absorb for that money and the amount of uh, headache you'll go through, that's the amount you're prepared to accept for a happy life you'll have. It. So the number one factor that's going to decide how successful you are as a person is your ability to absorb stress, your stress level. The better you are at dealing with stress, the more problems you can fix, the more money you have. So you have to decide on that level where you want, how much stress you can possibly absorb as a man. And then if you truly want that level, you're going to get it. I believe any man can make anything they want, depending. Any one of you here, I, I have no idea how much money you're making, but if you ever say, you know what, I'm throwing away my relationship, I'm throwing away my social life, and I'm going ham, I'm going nuts, oh, I don't care what they do to me, I'm going to I'm go and I'm going to make it. You'd make a bunch of money. I had a plan. Everything was like, okay, today we have to do, day after day after day until you get there. And this is what most people don't have because they're too arrogant or too lazy. I don't think it's stupid. I think most people, if you laid out a plan and they tried their very best and they were willing to learn, could do it. I don't think people are too stupid to make money. They're just too lazy or too arrogant to make money. That's the problem. I sometimes think how much work I put into my life. I mean, literally every day, as, as you said, nearly every minute yeah. is to make your life happen the way you want it to happen. Yeah. And I look at others and I think, how do you actually survive out there? You're putting no effort into your life. How do you actually survive? It's true. And it's incredible because if you don't, I wake up every day and I think, how do I make my life better? Nobody else wakes up each day and goes, how do I make my so if you're not the person who's waking up every day going, how do I improve my existence? Then nobody, nobody on the planet is considering improving your one spin on Earth. Nobody else cares. So if you don't care, then you're fucked. So you need to wake up and care. And it's amazing to me. Like you're saying, how did I find my mentors? I just tried a bunch of them. Like when I had no money, I would try very hard to I'd listen to lots of different people or I'd try different things. And I wasn't, I wasn't scared to invest in myself because I understand that, look, if he's taking time out of his life, then I need to reward him for it financially. Mm. And I tried very hard and I listened and I paid attention and I was never lazy. I don't believe there's a person on the planet who pays attention tries their best, is never lazy, is on time, works hard, has a mentor, and is giving it his all, who isn't rich. You have to have ownership of everything good that's ever happened to you and everything bad that's ever happened to you. I have complete ownership for the fact that I was canceled. I don't sit there and go, oh, they're lying about me. Yes, they're lying, but I still own it completely. They're lying about me and they're talking shit, but I own it and I took responsibility for it. And I sat there and I took absolute accountability and I thought, okay, how can I turn this in my favor? And I beat them. If I'm walking down the street and it starts to rain, I take responsibility for that. I didn't have to be in rainy London. I could have been somewhere else. I could have brought an umbrella. Could have took a car. I am responsible for getting wet in the rain. And there's people out here who just don't take any responsibility for their own actions, let alone the weather. You need to work and save for 70 years to afford one of my 36 cars in one of my seven houses. You can't save yourself to the top. No. You can only earn your way to the top. Invest in yourself, get knowledge, pay attention to mentors, start another business, open something. You need to do something because you're not going to save your way to the top. When I was broke, I thought everyone was broke. You do. Because I was broke. 100%. And then you get rich and you start thinking, shit, everyone has money. But like, there's people out there with money like you couldn't fucking fathom. Mm. There is so much money in the world. You're a man and you're out here and you go, you know what? Who do I want to be? I want to be strong and rich and brave and respected. Then I need friends who are 
strong and rich and brave and respected. That's what you need to do. If you're going to say, oh, I want to be these things, but I hang around with this guy because we play FIFA together, then you can stay a fucking loser. And that is your decision. Stay a loser. I have no sympathy for losers. I don't get a solitary fuck if you want to stay at the bottom of the society. If I'm going to ignore how I feel day after day so I can perform, regardless of whether I'm sad, happy, pissed off, tired. If I'm gonna get up and work anyway when I'm tired, mm -hmm. how do you expect me to feel sorry for you because you didn't work when you were tired? Mm -hmm. If I don't care about my own emotions, I certainly don't give a solitary shit about yours.